Welcome everyone to the grand finals of the League of Legends College Championship. After six months of intense battles between more than 100 teams and thousands of players, it all comes down to this. A historic battle between the longtime kings of collegiate Maryville University and defending champions University of St. Thomas. Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Degon Gonzalez, joined by Hawk and Grapes to break down today's historic game. Guys, it's so exciting. It's great to be back. You got the two college students here with you, Degon. So maximum relatability here on the analyst desk. Very it's gonna much. Be a good time. The chemistry is going to be on point, right, Hawk? <laughs> oh yeah, man. We're going to have a great time. We've already been having a lot of fun so far this weekend with some, I mean, pretty great three zeros maybe. But we're <laughs> we're really looking forward to today's games. Absolutely. Now, earlier this week, we saw both Maryville and St. Thomas sweep their competition in their semifinal matches, taking both their opponents down three to zero. Uh, in different ways here, Graves. Yeah, I wouldn't have been surprised to see either SLU or Winthrop take a game, but these were the two teams from the start when that round of 32 bracket came out that we were expecting to meet in the finals, and it would have been weird to see it to any other team here. And that's the whole thing, right? We expected Maryville and USC to be the best, but we had doubts about how much Winthrop and SLU might be able to rise up and contest them, but both teams taking care of business. No doubts in our mind that they deserve to be here. Absolutely. And while this is the last day of Collegiate League of Legends in 2023, we have one more big day tomorrow with the grand finals of the first ever Collegiate Valorant Championship with powerhouses Northwood University against the Kings of the East, Winthrop University. That was a big, big upset for Winthrop. That was a very clear two versus three matchup and Winthrop coming up huge here. Of course, all the action will be available online, but you can join us here to see the best collegiate play in the nation live on stage for free doors will open at 11 a.m. with the show starting at 12 p.m. Pacific you don't want to miss it now to get us into the action for our league tournament we've seen Maryville University achieve great results in this tournament but how did they get here here's scary Jerry giving his insight on how Maryville preps for the win I would say that a lot of the preparation you know comes before we've been practicing all year for this so you know, we're generally speaking, we're pretty confident because we know that we've put in more work than anyone else. Well, the work that they've put in has turned up heads here as they have taken a ton of heads throughout the tournament. And it seems like they have prepared for this specific matchup against UST all year long. They most certainly have. They have had some bad blood with the University of St. Thomas that we'll get into maybe a bit later. But the fact remains, Maryville, only dropping one game in the entire collegiate season, zero in the college championship so far. They have lived up to expectations. They have looked like a team that's qualified for the LCS Challengers. And you can see here in this series against Winthrop, right? Like, just never seemed like they were really in a bad spot. Always having the upper hand. This play by Niles also just like, my goodness, incredible. Yeah, it really was. And we're gonna maybe take a little bit of time to have some fun. Uh, of course, this is the college championship. These players, they are familiar with getting some grades perhaps. So with both these teams getting a 3-0, we've decided to break down who did so in better fashion. We've got a few categories laid out here and then we'll give the teams a final grade at the end, starting off with Maryville's 3-0 over Winthrop with the early game where, I mean, guys, they were so incredibly dominant in the early game. It looked effortless getting big gold advantages without really needing even too many kills. They were getting a big fat A plus from hey. me for the early game. But in the mid to late, things may be a little bit more difficult. That's where they left the door open for Winthrop in some of those games. However, despite that, they never really lost out on too much. So they're gonna lose some marks. We're gonna give them a B minus. And now the other two grades here, teamwork, you mentioned there were some mistakes in the mid to late game, but you know, when one of the players inted, all the players inted, they all went forward. It was something that I think Maryville have cleaned up in a little bit over the years, but we're gonna give them an A minus for that because they did work together as a team. Entertainment value as a whole, I thought Winthrop actually put up a good fight, but it was some really high quality League of Legends played overall from Maryville University. Entertainment value gonna get an A minus. Yeah, both teams definitely look great, including Maryville, obviously. They've got quite a few A's on the board. Overall, we are gonna give them an A minus for the series as well. Look, clean up the mid to late game a little bit, but everywhere else, we are looking great. Maryville, they looked fantastic, and coming into today, they're gonna look to replicate that success. All right, A minus. That's a good job from 
Professor D gone here and finish writing that one down. <laughs> any, added, added, any like extracurricular notes in, in there? No, no, no. Just good job, right? If you if you got the A minus right. and you're going for some history making uh, moves here, just stay on the course. Things should go their way. Again, uh, Maryville looking to be the first ever three time champion in the college championship. Currently tied right now with UBC, thanks to Kalish Baker Bobchin back in the day. But uh, Maryville <laughs> is looking to cement their legacy here as the best in uh, the history of College League of Legends. And you can take a look at the, the B-roll that we're showing here, and the amount of storied players that have come out of this organization really is impressive. Clyde, Saskio, you saw winning those two championships, and Niles actually still here in 2023 after taking that trophy in 2019. That's right. Well, Maryville are looking for that historic third title. Here's what Ott Orange would say a mean a victory would mean for their legacy today. It's been a while since Maryville's won a league championship, I think 2019. I haven't won since I've been there. I think it just shows that they're still able to... Obviously, everyone knows we're still able to compete, but it shows that we're able to get across the finish line. And, that, and, and I think it would cement Maryville as... If we win this year, it would cement Maryville as the number one collegiate program. Because we've been at the top every year. We're always there. It's just getting over that hump really cements us as the top dogs. Absolutely, but standing in their way, very difficult task. A lot of cement in either side, right? It, it's the greatest program in the history of League of Legends or the hottest program in the history of League of Legends and putting them on the doorstep of it if UST wins. But uh, uh, this is a battle that goes back to last year's semifinals in 2022. Right, and that's the whole thing, right? Maryville, they already overcame one of their demons in Winthrop last year, and now to reclaim the title that they so desperately want, they've got to take down St. Thomas as well. And they're, as we referenced earlier, has been some bad blood between these teams. You ask anyone on Maryville and they're like, hey, we want another shot at St. Thomas. And they did play a couple months later at Gateway Legends, but the Rosses were a little bit different. Maryville did end up winning, but this is really the true rematch here. For all the marbles. Maryville, I think they would, it would just mean so much to them if they got this. And you could take a look at the rosters here. Some differences, of course, Scary Jerry having a top four run of his own over on Converse last year. But I mean, it is crazy to think that out of all these five players, only Niles is the one with that collegiate title. And they've really constructed something special this year with this Maryville roster. It feels like people have said that this one looks different, feels different. They might be able to just get over that hump. Again, just a roster full of experience and firepower and as Clerky has done year after year over at Maryville, a roster that's built to win. One of the main reasons why the man in the mid lane get back, the man from Adelaide, Australia, showing up huge in the tournament and really causing chaos for every single mid laner in Collegiate. Yeah, conveying here, didn't have the greatest best of five series against Get Back, but this is a guy that has- But who been, has? <laughs> yeah, nobody really. I mean, get Back has been incredible all season long, both in Collegiate and also in the NECL qualifiers that have happened throughout 2023. A big reason why Maryville's on this stage today. Um, and overall, I think it'll have to be really, really good, especially in the laning phase against Robbie Bob for them to have a shot today. Again, if Scary Jerry is a win condition and a way for Maryville to get on through, one of the things they've got to focus on is on the bottom side of the map, knowing that Shogo is waiting them. He's been talking the whole time. That means Scary Jerry's going to have to have a huge game here, Hawk. And him and Zyko had a great series against Winthrop. A couple games of Cybercom winning the 2v2 all across the board. So, this bot lane does inspire a lot of confidence, but it's as you said, Digon, their work is most certainly cut out for them coming to this one. All right, going to be a tall, tall task for this bot lane to stand up against not only one of the best players in Collegiate, but one of the best AD carries in North America. Yeah. I'll give that title over to Shogo yeah. because he's yeah. done it time and time again. The Collegiate Kings, though, of Maryville aren't the only ones feeling the weight of their expectations on the shoulders. Here's Dardock with UST on the pressure he feels to perform in the finals. Uh, it makes me play better for sure. I like the I like the pressure under the game. And if somebody really wants to target me, like I felt like they did in game two, they really tried to tilt me and get me behind an early game. It doesn't matter at all for me or Shogo, I think. Very, very aware. To like quick, quick little <laughs> caveat there yeah, for me or Shogo. He knows he's got a target. Maybe, but no, he knows. He knows. Like <laughs> yeah. this is a squad that has had to get behind two large personalities and grow their own personalities. And I really love the way that Dardock is like, hey, I'll tank the aggro. Even if you set me behind, I will find ways to get back into this one as they did in, against uh, uh, St. Louis University in that 3-0 victory. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was a bit messy, maybe more than they bargained for, but they were really able to make the plays that they wanted regardless and still managed to come out on top.
There were definitely moments where St. Louis looked very competitive, but a 3-0 nonetheless. And you know what happened against Mary with the Maryville Winthrop series. We got to head back to our report card to just see how good UST performed in that sweep against SLU. Again, just incredible performance out of the defending champions. But there are some things to nitpick a little bit. For the early game, I feel like, you know, you could think of the early games as like the tests that you take throughout the semester. The first one they passed, the second one, they kind of bombed a little bit. St. Louis got off to a good start. They needed a, you know, basically 100 to get a passing grade, and they did do that. They dominated the early game for game three. Gonna give them a B plus there. The mid to late game, though, definitely is where we saw some Ooh. cracks. Shogo getting caught gave St. Louis the opportunity to take multiple Barons in the best of three. C minus for them here. Yeah, it was a little spicy in the mid to late for sure, giving up those Barons, but their teamwork was another place where they shine. There were some mistakes here and there, so they're gonna lose marks for that, but they're gonna get some back as well because they had a concerted effort to try to mental boom SLU as a team, which <laughs> gives them some points. So B plus going in for teamwork. And as far as entertainment value, look, it was a crazy series. There were some great picks like the Pant, the Kogma, Dardock, Lee Sin with the Insect as well, but it's almost so messy, it was hard to keep track. So we're gonna give them a B for entertainment. It was a fun series overall, a fun sweep. However, I think that Maryville's best of three or best of five was a little bit more high quality. So overall grade for this one going to be a B. All right, this is a good, but does good beat great when it's time to show it on the rift? We'll find out in just a little bit. Uh, so we give them a B. What is the parting wisdom here for the defending champ St. Thomas to get back to the top that they did last year? What do they got to do? Well, I thought their drafts actually against St. Louis were very creative and made a lot of sense. I just need to make sure that Shogo is always in the right position to deal as much damage as possible. When they are playing as that five-man unit, that is where UST looked like the best collegiate program in the country. Yeah, play around Shogo, and that man can do amazing things for you. Look, there's a reason why he's so confident and cocky. But another thing as well, Porsche up in the top lane, up against Niles. That was the only, or this is the only returning matchup that played against each other last year. And Porsche surprisingly got the better of Niles. So if you're able to create an advantage on both side lanes, that could put St. Thomas in a great position. Again, Take the repeat. three players returning from last year's championship roster in Porsche, Robbie, Bob, and Shogo. The additions of Dardock and Daption just, uh, just elevate them to a whole new level that they're looking to show against the Kings of Collegiate and Dethrone. And not only are Dardock and Daption incredible players in their own right, they were kind of hand selected by the UST roster, the ones that were still around to make their repeat run. And so instilling a lot of confidence, they've been building that synergy over the past couple of weeks. And in that series against Lou, they look pretty good. And I think that they're ready to go back to back. All right, we're gonna take a quick look at that key matchup that you brought up earlier there, Hawk. It's Porsche against Niles on the top side of the map. One that was expected to go Niles way with all the experience, with the championship under his belt. But Porsche surprised folks, took enough of an edge and a lead there that it became a problem. And you can't divert all your resources either to the top side, especially when you know the bottom side needs it. And one of the ways that UST won that semifinal last year. Yeah, historically, Niles, a really great carry player, garners so much pressure up in the top side. But Porsche has done a really good job throughout his entire career at just taking whatever is handed to him. I mean, this kid's only 18 years old and is already one of the best weak side players and just a perfect fit for this UST roster. He's got the pedigree in it, the cousin of longtime LCS jungler Acadian on that top side of the map. Porsche is carving out his own legacy. And speaking of legacies, got to talk about the main win condition here, the main man for UST. It's Shogo, the bot lane monster. Yeah. What, what even needs to be said about this player? He's already got the tweet scheduled, ready to go for after the series. He's given Maryville a game uh, right. as far he said as three one. Yeah, he said three one. So maybe a bit of humility, but I mean, he is the guy for UST. 12 games on the stage here throughout last year's championship and this year's. 11 unique champions played. I would not be surprised to see some new marksmen. Might be running out of ADCs at this point to dominate on. Now, before we head into our predictions, let's have a listen on what the players have to say about their opponents in that bot lane. I would say that, yeah, my motivation is, is still great. Um, I don't really like St. Thomas, and I think they'll likely make the finals. So I'm excited to be able to play against them and just beat up on them because they're they're really cocky, honestly. So it'll be it'll be a great match if we go against St. Thomas, and I'm really motivated to win the championship, honestly. After we win the back-to-back -back championships, people will stop talking about Maryville like they're the kings of kings of collegiate when obviously they are far from it. Um, gives us bragging, bragging rights for the rest of the year, which feels great into Scary Jerry. Great combo. Um, 
And yeah, it will just be another 10K in the pocket. I love that from Shogo. I got to ask what his uh, uh, measurement scale is uh, far from the Kings of Collegiate. That that feels, I don't know if you yeah. can be more close yeah. to Kings of Collegiate, if not the Kings of Collegiate, if you're Maryville. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure what more they could do except win the third one. Yeah. I mean, in his mind, it's just Shogo, big gap, everybody else. Right? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> uh, this actually is a, a really interesting story because the state of legacy actually playing a big factor here. If Maryville win, that is their third Collegiate title. Uh, and that's far as more than anybody else. If UST win, they match Maryville in championships with two in only their second year of existence. So if UST is able to pull it out, maybe we do have to start thinking about which school is more dominant in recent years. All right. Well, it's time for our analysts here to tell us who is going to win. Will it be? Oh, grapes, you spicy bit. boy. All right, you go first. You 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 picking UST for the back to back. Hey, I want to cast our minds back to a couple of months ago in the NACL qualifiers, where Team Fish Taco, which you know had a lot of these UST players, actually beat Maryville in a best of three. They have Shogo here. They have Porsche up in the top lane. Those players weren't on that Team Fish Taco roster. I think it's gonna be very competitive. Both schools have upgraded since last year, but I think UST have a slight edge, especially in that bot lane. Three two same. Uh, UST. All right, Hawk. I don't know, man. Look, I'm giving UST one game for Shogo Diff. We've already talked about the impact that this player can have, but I think Maryville as a team, way too clean, odd orange and get back, going to make Dardox life difficult. Hey, man, uh, Shogo has that tweet already scheduled for a 3-1 victory, so we'll keep an eye out for a tweet to come out from him, whether they win sooner, yeah. win later, or... Might not win at all. We'll see what happens here in our final match of the Collegiate 2023 season. To get us into the matchup, let's send it down to Kangas to introduce the teams. 4,317 players, 455 schools, 18 conferences, one trophy. Six months ago, the top esport programs in the nation went to battle. They fought, they bled, and they persevered for a chance to be the 2023 College League of Legends champions. Now, only two remain. First up, the two-time SeaLol champions on a mission for a record-setting third title from St. Louis, Missouri, Maryville University! The only player returning from his 2019 freshman year title run, now a senior. It's his last chance for the last dance, Niles! Fresh off his slaying, his own demons in the semis. He's now ready to topple Giants in his second finals. He'll see your flame and say your cringe, on Orin! Hailing from Australia and dominating his competition on the rip to this point. Bringing the thunder from down under. Get back. <laughs> Top four in his first CeeLo year. Now he's finally with the kings of collegiate. He's the Mary Carey. It's scary, Jerry. Contrary to his name, he brings stability to the bot lane. The stellar laner, team fight engager, hopes and dreams slayer, here's Zyko! And their opponents today, your defending CeeLo champions, looking for back-to-back -back titles. From Houston, Texas, it's UST! In his title run last year, he time and again proved the haters wrong with his incredible top lane carry performances. He's picking you up at eight. It's Porsche! A freshman in the halls, but a veteran on the rift. His team is leading to the stage that he once left. He talks the talk because he walks the walk. It's Darda! A founding member of the program, returning for another title, looking to go two for two, Mr. Consistency, Robbie Bob! Spend five minutes in a room with him and he'll tell you he's the best AD carry in the world. Watch him on the rift and you'll wonder if maybe he's right. The villain royalty who knows no humility, Shogo! A new face for the reigning champs, handpicked by 
his teammates and giving traction to the action. It's Daption! Will Maryville finally get their revenge? Or will USC go back to back and match their opponents with their second title? The CLOL 2023 League of Legends Championship starts right now. Maryville has been our goal the whole year. Maryville was the best team other than us, so it's been a long time coming. Well, I'm excited to be able to play against them and just beat up on them because they're, they're really cocky. It'll be a great match against St. Thomas, and I'm really motivated to win the championship. There's a lot of people watching me specifically. It just makes me like feel great, play great. He's the uh -oh, one facing uh -oh. in, but Shogo oh, comes no. forward, flashes in. I know they're after me. I know they're big fans. They've been scouting and they've been prepping. None of it is going to matter. I always tell Jerry that the reason why I'm so hard on him is because I know he can be better. He already is a great AD carry, but he, he gets better every practice that we have together. Pretty slow in the mid lane, but an uh -oh. engaged ball, that's a dead carry, mobility's down. Maryville Esports is just the best program in the nation by far. And if anyone says otherwise, they're just coping. If we win this year, we'd submit Maryville as the number one collegiate program. After we win the back-to-back -back championships, people will stop talking about Maryville like they're the kings of, kings of collegiate, when obviously they are far from it. Gives us bragging, bragging rights for the rest of the year. If we get two back-to-back -back wins with different rosters, this will definitely mark me as the king of collegiate. I want to win a trophy for myself. I want to win a national championship for Maryville. We've got one opponent left, and we focus solely on them. We beat them, we're champions, that's it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the League of Legends Grand Finals. I'm joined here in the caster booth today with Cubby to witness the true finals of CLO. We said it was the true final last year. This time around, we actually have the mantle that we feel like this match deserves. These two teams have fought so hard to get here this year. It felt like it was bound to be UST yeah. versus Maryville at some point. The fact that we get to wrap up Seelaw with this matchup on the big stage, I'm really excited to see what happens. This is going to be the closest match we've had all weekend. It's not going to be 3-0 today. I, 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 almost, I don't want to promise, but I do promise, <laughs> you know, I think it's going to be close. And if there's any doubt from last year, if you remember the whole concept of the semifinals was the true finals, yeah. they both 3-0'd their opponents this time around to get to this stage. And the smack talk between these teams has been so entertaining and has breathed life into CeeLo once again. I mean, we've had like some players being like, all right, I already blocked people on stage, so like they won't type to me. We've had some players like, oh, like am I going to all type or mm -hmm. all chat or not? Zyka was like, I think I'm the only person on my team that's actually going to have all chat enabled for this yeah, game. Yeah. I'm pretty <laughs> so, sure Odd Orange even banned you. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, at one point, yeah. You know, he, he, he's a block his own teammates sometimes, you know? That's, <laughs> that's when you know you're getting in each other's head. Well, again, there was so much talk going into this series already. I think that's part of it. You don't want to have that extra mental edge be an issue when you get into the game. I'm expecting both of these teams to still be typing to each other, even if they can't see the messages. That's just the type of players that oh, they yeah. are. But we're in the pick and ban. Game number one, starting off. All right, so you might be asking yourself, why is there a Karthus ban uh, on blue side? Well, you know what the great part about finals in is, Kangas? I get to leak scrims, all right? True. <laughs> so, uh, there's no more leaking now. Yeah, there's They're no more stage. leaking. Uh, so the card that's picked, it's actually been the UST answer into Milio. Uh, they specifically like to play Senna plus Karthus into Milio. So by banning Karthus on blue, I'm expecting to see Milio then being forced to be banned on the red side, as that yeah. is the most common answer. We did see it make it through one time in the semifinals. Uh, and we, we did see, of course, um, USC pick it up in red side second pick. They have their own counter to it. We have seen that in the likes of the Karthus, but like you said, with that band away, not on the table, Amelia's taken off. They go for the Maokai ban as well, so that yep. means it's gonna be the Vi. Yep, Vi being taken. Also, I like the fact that we have seen Cog be target banned against Shogo, specifically in that series uh, that they played against St. Louis, but the, the fact they take away the Lulu, they're like, hey, you can have the Cog ball. We're just gonna take away the things that enable that yeah. pick. I do like that. I feel like that hits a few more champs that Shogo could play, but with the Vi showing, it's immediately gonna be a Gragas and a Wukong picked up. So mm. that flex in the Gragas is gonna be available for the University of St. Thomas throughout the rest of the draft is MU, look the power pick that bot lane, Sushi Nami. I love the Gragas on red side because then you can hold the double counter pick to the last second. Yeah. That means that Maryville's gonna have a lot of questions going into the second round of bans. And is that locked in? Oh yeah. Wow. It's Draven, baby. This is the answer into Lucian. Uh, we've seen this played at a high level. Specifically, I think the LCK was the one that started to popularize this pick. Shogo 
He wants the counter in lane, believes that him and Daption can beat these guys. And I will say, this is where the Lulu ban gets a little bit more value. It's not the combo you're looking for with Draven, but it does take away like the Aphelios Lulu option. Yeah. Uh, so it is now forced UST to go very aggressive in a lot of their game plans. We assume this will be bot focus, but for the player that, you know, we've been joking, lacks humility, to take that Draven to be the main character in game one, I feel like it's very fitting for this final. I think it lives up to expectations. And what did he say about uh, Scary Jerry on camera earlier? He said something along the lines of, the biggest ego is also the worst player on the team. So I think this is kind of like a, he's throwing shade doubly now at Scary Jerry saying, I'm logging into Draven into your Lucianami. I can beat you where typically this lane is strongest. So aggressive supports that pair well with Draven gonna be taken away. I expect to see an Amumu taking away here. Yeah, so that's off the board now. And Daption is relegated to go for something like a Leona, which is gonna be instantly picked up. Leo, only one direction that Leona can go, that is in. You have a little bit of non-committal engage once you're level six, but yes, once you're in the thick of it, you're in the thick of it. And now Maryville have that information. There's a lot of dive tools, a lot of engage tools between the Wukong and the Leona. So Maryville now can decide, do we want to kite back or answer it? So far, they lock in the Ari and the Olaf to pair. And this is all about mid game. We already saw that Niles is comfortable blinding that Olaf earlier in the tournament, as a lot of our top winners have been comfortable with that here. As a reminder for people at home, we are on 13.9, so this looks a little bit more similar to MSI. Yeah. That's what we're expecting as, oh boy, is that a Robbie oh. ball? Oh boy. Okay. So look at all the tools that can enable it. Gragas, Wukong, even the Draven can enable the Yasuo on top of I all mean, these knockups, these, you know, pushes. Wow. Windwall gets a lot of value against Ari, Lucian, Nami, but if I hold off, can get on top of you by just pressing R. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a game, a cat and mouse. Can you catch Robbie Bob? And mm -hmm. importantly, can Maryville engage first? Because if Wukong, Gragas are allowed to set up for this Yasuo, they can get a lot of burst down and fights, which and exactly what you want with the Gragas Yasuo, but also can get Draven those early resets, which yeah. Maryville will, be, will really, really be looking to dodge out on. Well, what, what I like even more about this is the fact that they have so much damage. That's the only way to CC the Olaf. Yeah. You can't lock him down with your CC, so just more damage on top of it. Even Niles could have trouble getting in these fights here. I think game plan, again, it's all about getting Draven that early adoration stack. I don't know why I said reset, you know. It, it's all about stacks uh, for Shogo. Maybe he's just looking to, you know, reset the hopes of Maryville. You're so used to Jinx being in the meta. Yeah. Uh, I mean, honestly, yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what's great about Collegiate? No Jinx Aphelios handshake. True. You know, it, it's yeah, we get game. Lucian versus Draven yeah. as the coaches yeah, shake hands in. on stage. The teams are getting ready to load in. And this is C-Lol Finals already in Pick Band Cubby. This is living up to the hype between these two schools. Again, a lot of it. I'm really curious to see what Odd Orange does to respond because when I see a Gragas top and a Wukong, playing towards that Draven, you already know the Krogs can be left on that island. Yeah. Odd Orange could be the one that has to make decisions. Do I want to match the Wukong and try and 3v3, 4v4 bot? Or can I go elsewhere and try and get advantages for my team on the map? Mm -hmm. I, I'm looking for that in the early game. Let's see how Maryville responds. I like the idea of playing through Niles, playing through this Olaf. Let's see if MU and Odd Orange have the same game plan. I, Niles one option, I think it's actually play through mid. Robbie Bob's gonna have Ignite on the Oswo. Wanna see if Otto Orange can attack that. It's been a winning game plan for Maryville so far in Seaball. Well, the players are loaded up onto the rift for the first game of our 2023 Collegiate Championship. So before we get into it, here's Dardock on his return to the big stage. Everybody on my team and probably the other Collegiate teams have been in agreement that it feels a lot different than our whole um, situation online. For the most part, we were practicing online and very far away from each other for the most part. So I think being in person is a huge buff for our team specifically as well. And being on stage is an even bigger buff for me personally, because I'm very, very comfortable on stage. Um, so yeah, the overall experience of the seal all this year has been awesome for me. I did, you know, talk to Shogo beforehand and he admitted like, hey, before this week, we barely had time to scrim because as was mentioned on the desk, some of the yeah. players were playing on Team Fish Taco, uh, including the coach Alorum. And he's like, hey, Maryville, they got to scrim tier two teams all year. Yeah. Uh, but he said, you know what can help us catch up with that? It's Dardock and his experience. So even his teammates who voted him captain, citing how much Dardock can bring to this team. He's back on the stage that he once left now for a collegiate championship title. Right now in the early game, we oh. see Dardot go for an early like start top, and now we might look for the okay. invade. This is one way you can consistently beat Vi as Wukong. Take red, level two invade. Otto Orange started same side, trying to match, but Dardot. Yeah, just right in on top of him, steals away the Gromp. 
And that red buff slow means the flash out of odd orange. Vi usually goes W and E to speed up that clear, so no Q. Forced out. This is a tried and true strategy that I've seen a lot in this matchup. And Dardock knowing that, hey, Otto Orange likely to match my pathing going from top to bot because it's a Draven lane. Able to take advantage of it in the invade. Didn't get the Gromp, but will take away the Wolves and already gets that flash out of Otto Orange. That's really going to help Robbie Bob mid, who I expect to be attacked by the side of Maryville. Some tells me that the uh, scrim partners weren't doing that to Otto Orange, but Dardock will. And they'll even get the knock up in the mid lane. Flash out from get back. A couple more Otto wow. should get it. The Red Buff burn and an Ignite kill for Robbie Bob. And right when we got into this game, we expected a lot of the weight of this matchup to actually fall on Get Back versus Robbie Bob, because Dardock, we know how powerful he is as a jungler, but Get Back has been someone who the teams believe is the best mid laner here at Seaball. Yeah. Forcing Odd Orange out of the jungle early, then immediately attacking the mid lane, taking advantage of the ignite that Robbie Bob has. Dardock has his team off to a quick start. He even took Wolves on his way over, so doing a little bit of counter jungling means Odd Orange won't have as much on the map to get back out to. Huge lead so far for USD. That's yeah, gonna give Robbie Bob a really good reset. Important given that he did take that ignite and not the teleport. Now, if Ari's on the back foot, Maryville for me, they've been really impressive when they've been able to get get back freed up. Odd Orange yeah. did such a good job in their series against Winthrop and making sure that get back just had one gank. Then from there, they were able to have first say in the mid jungle for the entirety of the game. But now. Yasuo is a good matchup into R. You can block a lot of projectiles with that wind wall. You're able to go in. Already going to have a lead off uh, once he's able to reset. Really, really good start from USD, countering what I think Maryville wanted to do to answer. Shutting down one of the key carries for Maryville early on means that USD are off to the races now. And Dardock back into his own jungle can start farming up. We don't see any hint of an early gank after that first one. So once the resets come through, we'll see how far ahead Robbie Bob truly is. I will say for Maryville, though, top lane was ahead in the CS for a little bit there. Got a shove in. Bot lane also quite ahead. It's the early reset, too. So Mary, maybe Maryville can play through other lanes outside of get back. Not how they won their last series, but it yeah. could be the strategy here. See Robbie Bob able to get that wave in. Really clean reset for him as junglers might meet at Crab. Not going to be the case. Another fun fact. Dardock versus Odd Orange. You want to go back to some LCS history here, Kangas? Let's hear it. Odd Orange was the jungler for Fox Academy back when Dardock played for Echo Fox. I know talking with Dardock before, uh, you know, I said, hey, if you face Maryville, you know, you're going up against an old teammate. And Dardock was like, yeah, he knows I'm better than him. Back then, <laughs> you know, I was teaching him things. I was the, you know, the big jungler for Echo Fox. Uh, it, he should remember from back then, you know, I had the advantage. I'm still going to have it today. Uh, I mean, obviously got in the face early. Yeah, yeah. Can, can, it's got to be the most Dardock answer I think I've heard all day. Adaption goes in on the bot lane. We saw Dardock hovering top, maybe looking for a lane gank, just hovering as the wave crashes in, in case Odd Orange is around. Odd Orange is on the top half of the map, but won't actually go for that gank. But you're right, yeah, Dardock did get the early raid on Odd Orange, and props Odd Orange for at least stabilizing a little bit. He is back up in kind of a lead in CS right now in the jungle. Dardock's been hovering a lot of these lanes, meanwhile. Dash is taking a couple turret shots. Scary Jerry and Zyko don't look fully committed to the kill, but that is Ignite Burn. We talked a bit about the game plan here uh, for Maryville, you know, kind of how to answer uh, the Draven side of the map, because obviously you are looking to get that cash in on the Draven passive, really where his value starts to come in. I think the other thing that's really scary to me, if I am Maryville, this level six fight from St. Thomas and around this Rift Herald, you have Kragas Wukong on the top side with the Yasuo. Yes, Olaf can dodge out on that by pressing R, but mm -hmm. the ability for UST to pop someone, especially with Robbie Bob having that slight lead, could be very deadly for the side of Maryville. So I I'm kind of wondering if they're going to send up Lucian Nami to try and make this a 5v5, use uh, the big ultimates to maybe help them out, or if they're going to try and drop that Rift Herald instead, stack dragons, something to look out for uh, in this game. Stacking dragons against this composition can be tough, though, because as you go into the later dragons, they have so much CC to set up fights, and not all of it is committal. I'm looking at the Gragas ult, I'm looking at the Leona ult, so you're not guaranteeing a situation where you can just take those dragons. We do see an engaged bot lane that's flash out of Scary Jerry, as Darduck was hovering around. Odd Orange is here, Vault Breaker channeled. Not going to find an engage. USD, they walk to the turret. That is fine, as, uh, you know, one of the reasons I also brought up the early Dragon Vi is so good at getting through dragons with uh, the denting blows on her W. Uh, so Dardock being here. Ooh, play around is, oh. Another Zenith Blade. Scary Jerry does not flash this time around. Dardock's in there with the red buff and an auto from Shogo plus Dardock's follow-up. That is a kill. Otto Orange tries to trade it back around. Dash who flashes. Zyko with the kill. Robbie Bob. Is running right into Robbie Bob, though, and oh. Shogo cashes out. 
That's the cash in UST was looking for. That Dragon Timer denied as Dardock forcing fights on the bot side. And now we see a quick reset. They're going to try and get a buy, get position on the map because I think they want to play for that Rift Herald still. Immediately spending that gold earned. That's the sheen for Shogo. Pretty big for the Draven. Let's take another look at this. Daption just willing to pull that trigger. Only one way for Leona, that is in, but I think the big key is Zyko being out of mana, and then Shogo finding the cancel on the first Vault Breaker for On Orange. Enabled UST to have the advantage as so much of Vi's damage is front loaded into that Q. So at least they were able to take down the first blood, and then Shogo, see what he's able to cash in with. Not bad early as. Oh, okay. 355. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty good. <clears throat> Basically, another kill. Well, shows in the inventory as it's going to be a Sheen and a Caulfields. So looking like it's going to be the Essence Reader for Draven again. We are on patch 13.9. Uh, so uh, if you see Gale Force and IE in the same inventory, you know, don't freak out. No, we, we haven't had the changes quite yet here for Koweisha. Did we make that PSA video yet? I, th I thought we were going to do something like that. We're saving that for challenges this upcoming okay, week. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be, uh, it might be hectic. Either way, though, Shogo rapidly accelerated towards that first item. Same with Robbie Bob, who not only got that first blood, but has also mounted a decent CS lead over Get Back so far around. It's really Niles, the only member right now from MU that's ahead. See if he can cash in with the Herald as Ottoworms has actually pulled this. This is what I was a little bit scared of. Looks like bot lanes are not going to be able to rotate. Dardock knows that this is being started. Again, that level six for the side of UST could be very scary with the Yasuo and the Gragas, but actually looks like they don't want to dogpile onto the Oldoff who had shove in that lane, so they will drop that first Rift Herald. Instead, play for control the bottom side of the map as Dardock's gonna get the camps of Auto Orange. I don't mind this response. I feel like a level six fight could have been favorable for UST, but if they don't want to jump into Olaf, eh, I, I can't really blame yeah. them too much for that. They can get something elsewhere. Early game Olaf is quite scary. Yeah. Might as well not play into the lane that, like I said, MU actually has a head of their lane opponent right now. But good to pick up an objective either way. When you're down one and a half thousand gold, USC have not started up the dragon. They just steal away a buff and they're stacking away for a dive. Okay, both will be spotted. And I really like what Odd Orange did here. Just ran straight bot, knowing that his bot camps are probably going to be taken. But he just wants to deny the dive, which given the hover, he is hiding. But they are able to deter that. So Maryville making some nice map plays to get themselves back in this game. That's a Rift Herald for dropping the red buff. I think that's well worth it for them. Not too bad. Zyko even hit the bubble. Daption was close to just diving under that turret. Had the Zenith Blade ready and was willing, but oh, UST not boy. finding it now. They're still looking for the repeat. Gank God Orange is still here. Watch for the tidal wave. That's the disengage option. They just Daption's jump out of Shogo. That's heal early. Chaining the CC. Shogo's down. Now Dardock's trying to get something back. Get back Scary here. Jerry, 80 carry for 80 carry. Get back joins another fight. The RE damage is enough. And MU walk away ahead. Robbie Bob joining in. Has the wind wall. Uses it early. Can't block any more CC, but can't find the knockup. So Maryville walking away, feeling good. Great hide and hover from Odd Orange as Daption was going for the collapse. But when Odd Orange pulled the trigger, Daption was kind of caught in Narnia in the tri brushes. We're going to get another look at this. You can see they're trying to pinch Psycho and Scary Jerry. But once Odd Orange shows, Daption's over the wall. He's stuck. Get back, commits the TP. It's a numbers advantage for Maryville, given the TP and given where Daption was at the start of that fight, and they cash in. One of the things I was talking about with Maryville before the match was their opinion of USD saying, look, they're good players, but they're yeah. not necessarily a team. We're the team. We make those plays together. And it's moments like that where you start to see it. They just commit to the engage, even when they know that they were about to get engaged on themselves. Really like that from Odd Orange. One snapshot was spotted, pulled the trigger, took the fight on their terms, and were able to find a man advantage. As Oh, look at that. We got MU into the sand. Hey, I like that. If you could tell, though, it wasn't a sunny day. It's been uh -oh. kind of gloomy. Uh -oh. Ooh, engage onto Zyko. Just trying to farm or ward up his own jungle. Flashes for safety, but UST, they had the trap ready and waiting, and now Zyko's going to have a rough time here. Do that's, they look for the dive? I think that's just Dragon. Just, okay. just, yeah, drop the dive. Just take the objective. Dragon, things started very late here for either team, uh, so may not see the five Dragon stack that we're looking for in terms of uh, you know, getting a soul, but... The moment okay actually one robbie bob charm hasn't been thrown yet oh it goes wide from get back and robbie bob survives did you get the dragon though odd orange vault breaker used push back no engage st thomas will take that we'll see if 
uh, MU can punish. Robbie Bob's flash being down. I'm looking at that Vault Breaker cooldown for Odd Orange. That ult is available. Pressing R on Yasuo with an Ari. So the flash, you want to fully commit. Might be able to get a one tap. Seeing the vision control right now, Odd Orange has two different approaches onto Robbie Bob. There's the control wards in both entrances from the river. They've invested a lot of vision around this river right now. It really does feel like MU are trying to keep get back safe after that early kill. But now it's get back's opportunity oh. to turn it around. Has Odd Orange in his back pocket. Windwall does block yeah. the charm. I mean, if that charm lands, I think he does. Oh, and for sure. No flash, no minion wave to go towards an Odd Orange being in get back's back pocket. As again, MU, something we really praise them for so far in Seawall. Their map play, but also I don't want his ability to free up Gitback, who again, a lot of the mid laners here are even saying, hey, Gitback, he's the strongest mid that we have in this tournament. He's been a big difference maker for MU. The fact they were able to find that 3-0 versus Winthrop, able to make it here on such dominant terms as Gitback. Oh, oh, hold on. Diving under the turret. Daption flashes away, taking up the turret. Scary Jerry oh, down. And now it's just an easy Ooh. kill on the Zyko. Double the Shogo. Triumph cash in for Dardock. That keeps him alive as, yeah, it's Rift Herald dropped in the top side. Niles gets plates and they zone Porsche off, but who cares? The bot lane goes down. More kills over to Shogo as St. Thomas playing towards their win cons, doing it damn well. This Draven is fed, Cubby. 3 1 and 2. Shogo has so much confidence coming in to this entire weekend, this week's event. The smack talk between him and Scary Jerry was palpable, and now he's the one that gets fed in game one. This is a big mental edge for UST. I'm curious, I, I mean, points are still all up here for the side of St. Thomas. They really haven't taken any. They're just finding kills. It's, I, I'm kind of curious where they send Shogo, but let's take another look at this. It's Scary Jerry, it's a nice dash to get out of the E and the all from Leona, but Everything else down wow. as Scary Jerry. Oh, he just gets taken out. Then you can see the Triumph procs for Dardock, making sure that he lives. The action played that so well. Absorbing yeah. the culling so the wave survives. Yeah. And then flashing over the tidal wave to get away and not die and trade a kill back. Nicely done. A nice growth arc too from Daption is he was originally an Enchantress and Yumi player on the ladder. I know that when he started playing with Wildcard back in 21, that was uh, one of the teams that actually did pretty well in Proving Grounds. Yep. Uh, so that was like kind of Daption's growth arc of like, wow, he can play Engagers. Good to see him now back in the scene in Collegiate. Still showing that growth as this Leona, I mean, he had to eat some bans. This isn't a, a pick that we expect all of our sports to pull out in Daption so far. The aggression's been off of him. He's been doing well. Giving traction to the action. Got with the bubble right there, but has the blast plan to get away just fine. And now, UST back with a gold lead for themselves. It was getting close. Maryville were actually coming back there for a short while. They brought it within 800 gold difference, but we're right back to that one and a half thousand lead for UST. As yet again, Dardock is just constantly hovering Shogo. I do think it's better defense, though, coming out of Maryville, as uh, you can see at least with the mini map. Got a couple of control wards. At least this time, Robbie Bob, he will have to clear these out uh, if, you know, they want to uh, eh, at least make another bot lane play. A little bit, maybe too late here for Maryville, but they were playing towards topside. Good to see them shift that focus towards the bot side, at least giving a little bit of defense to the lane that does whack summoner spells now. If you're down flash against Wukong Yasuo, if you're a Nami, eh, it doesn't feel too good. So Psycho's <laughs> able to at least pick that one back up. But we'll see if UST can then take a turn to A, eliminate that vision, and then B, make that play again. At least Scary Jerry also has the first item completed here. So Kill Force plus your Relentless Pursuit means that you're a little harder to get on top of. But so far, Damption has had his number regardless. Dragon spawning in 55 seconds as we see both teams start to prep, start to set up for it. If we have a 5v5, I, I still think the big difference maker is going to be Olaf. You're playing Olaf and the four champions that have to jump in. And Niles has been able to get a slight lead in the top side, given the Rift Herald and how this matchup plays out. Drag is more of the neutralizer. Not going to win lane against Olaf, just kind of stop him from winning too hard. So, I, I mean, Niles, he is the one person that is that defending champion from Seelaw. This is a game where with that blind Olaf, and given the comp that UST has, I think that he really has to come up big. He's going to be having to auto attack throughout all of it. So let's really keep an eye on A, if he joins the fight, which it looks like he will, given that he is in mid lane right now. But B also, when he uses that ultimate, he has to play a little bit of a game of cat and mouse to make sure that he doesn't get blown up by the Gragas Wukong Yasuo combo. But also he needs to keep on auto attacking to keep that up, keep the lifesteal up and keep going in these fights. Right now he's grouped up with the team. Doesn't have the yeah, teleport, so he this. just walks down. There's a very early yeah. teleport from Get Back, so Maryville's on it. 
UST showing a lot of respect to Maryville, who we've really praised for their good map play. Maryville's first to this objective. Niles came mid where it, they were able to set it up really nicely. So he's going to be able to split the dragon. Still a little bit of a gold lead here for UST, but they're at least going to trade out, get some more gold for themselves. I feel like this is an okay call for both teams. As honestly, when it comes to scaling, if this Yasuo was able to get on that backline at Maryville, one shot potential is there for the side of St. Thomas. So I think they might be waiting for a couple more items to try and then take fights on their terms at the one-two item mark. And looking to get back spilled as well. Not packing the most damage and something yeah. like this, going for more utility, survivability, and CC. So yeah, I think MU are in a position where they would like to accelerate the game state if they can. They haven't been able to find a big engage of their own yet since that engage bot lane. Doesn't mean it can't change right now. Odd Orange and Zyko are linking up in the top jungle and Robbie Bob was pushing there, but good danger sense from Robbie Bob just backs off. Nice to see Robbie Bob, you know, someone you called Mr. Consistent. It's definitely true. We expect him to play the control mages, but also Robbie Bob. Eh, he used to do, knew him a little bit for yeah. Zed. Zed, uh, Pantheon, now yeah. Yasuo. Busting out Yasuo too. He's control flexing mages his muscles who? a little bit. Uh, as also just announced for the Supernova roster today. So we will see him in Challengers this upcoming split, along with all of Maryville, the first college to break that barrier to Tier 2. And again, that big advantage, you know, at Shogo even recognized with Maryville, being able to scrim those Tier 2 teams, pretty much all split. Yep. I think that we've kind of seen that with how they've been able to slow this game down and play from behind, because yes, they were put in the back foot very early, but credit to MU, they did a nice job of stabilizing this game. We saw the early invade from Dardot got him massively ahead, but then since then, nothing that has been backbreaking for Maryville. Yeah. I think that, again, the fact that they are so confident in their team play for this team, it's rarely about an individual player just hard winning. It is about the team coming together and winning the game. And we're starting to see that right now as oh. everyone's grouping up around this oh. non-existent dragon. We saw hints of an engage from Odd Orange there. Didn't commit to it, though. It's a Herald play. Dardock might be looking to drop that at the inner to threaten. So MU kind of forced to pull and answer that as Odd Orange, though. He's looking. Here Ooh. we go. Engage on a Shogo. Flash and healer available. Flash early. Everyone's diving onto the back line, and they got him. Shogo down by the combo from Robbie Bob. Porsche is coming. down one in answer. Porsche joins in. That's oh. an AP. Groggins goes boom. That's one for two so far, make it a one for three. That was an expensive engage from Maryville. UST feeling great about it. Credit to poor. She came into that fight late, but that cask won the rest of the fight for the University of St. Thomas as it split up the grouping for MU allowed for St. Thomas to focus down the right targets as we get a replay. Otto Orange sees Shogo trying to cross, says, all right, this is our moment to go. Porsche, it's stuck bot. They burn everything to take down Shogo, but then it's the other people of St. Thomas stepping up as Robbie Bob finds a great two-man ultimate. He's able to flash out, and then look at this cast from poor Split Psycho. Niles forced to run. He has nothing left in the tank, and UST able to clean up. Nice counter engage from UST. Shogo being the magnet to pull everybody oh, arguably too deep into it. As now Niles does get a turret as we come back to live. And you can see that fight through the eyes of the Maryville faithful, right? It's going so well until Porsche joined. <laughs> and that cask was big from Porsche as that turned things back in favor of University of St. Thomas. Consequence of that, 4K gold lead now for UST and no summoner spells available for MU. Besides that flash from Zyko and TP from Get Back. So, I, I mean, Daption now, I'm really, I want to see Daption. Like when you're Leona, you have flash and no one else does. Pull the trigger, start yeah. a fight on your terms. If you're able to set up Wukong Yasuo, that is a free pick coming up, and that could be very valuable given the dragon. Especially when you factor in the item power spikes. They can throw their wallets here. Porsche now with the coveted two items completed here. Rod of Ages still stacking up a little bit, but Seraph's completed. And Dragon in 56 seconds. It will be tough for Maryville to answer this. Gotta say, for the side of UST is Auto Orange. A little bit of a bluff there with the Vault Breaker, but for UST, when flashes are down, that's when a combo like Gragas, Wukong, Yasuo becomes very deadly. So I, I don't expect Maryville to actually contest this dragon. I think they might threaten Baron or look elsewhere. So at the moment, you see Portion Daption kind of eliminating any flank angles that uh, could be available for Niles and the Ari, but Niles, top side of the map, he wants to make sure that you know, they at least get some control elsewhere because Maryville, they're committed to dropping this dragon. I think given the summoner spells that are not available for them, I do think this is the right call from MU. MU are actually on the... I, I was wondering if they're just going to start it up. 
No. Dardot can solo the dragon at this point, so you're not necessarily pulling UST all over towards you, so they decide yeah. to back up. Just clear out some of the vision itself. Ooh. UST will go for one more mid wave here before going for that dragon. I will say, Porsche resetting here is a tad interesting, as I thought that they would have started the dragon and then he could have TP'd the answer, but with the extra mid wave and the reset on Porsche, he will show, but this will enable them to save a TP, but this is the this counterplay is that we could look for. Explosive cask is available. Oh, he's spotted. <laughs> he's spotted. They know he's there. He's there menacingly. No wave as Porsche cleared it out before MU pulled the trigger. They don't get anything for this, and that is a dragon soloed by Dardock. And I know talking before this series, something that Niles even said was going to be really important on stage, objective setups. And he felt like MU, given their experience, their practice partners, and how much they've played together, they thought that would be a big edge for them. <laughs> And, you know, at St. Thomas, they're like, hey, they haven't played as much as a team. That's where we could, you know, outfight them, maybe get some advantages. I got to praise St. Thomas there as well. That was really nice, just having Dardox solo that dragon, understanding yeah. that, hey, MU, they don't have flashes. This team is smart enough to not fight us, given our comp. So we're going to commit the least amount of resources possible to that dragon, make sure we get it, and answer them elsewhere. Well played by St. Thomas. They also had some vision down across the bear or the dragon wall anyway, so they know that nobody's contesting them at that moment. Leave Dardock alone, everybody else get back on the map, make sure they're not losing too much elsewhere. And now they walk into the Baron pit and start clearing oh out the vision. They just start up the Baron, okay. Okay, if I'm St. Thomas, I'm pulling this to try and get kills while flashes are down. Robbie Bob. Oh, let's see he got he two turns. flanks. Yeah. Niles and Gitback are coming from awkward angles here. Daption might just be the sacrificial lamb. Gitback's in the pit. Burned it. Looking for Shogo. They're going to go for him. They got him. Dardock has secured the Baron. Lost his AD carry. Oh. Oh, he goes down. Gitback goes down. Meanwhile, Zyko's getting hunted by the rest of UST. Niles might be the only one to get out of here. And it's only Shogo that falls again, but his team around him able to turn the fight as Rami Bob. He's doing so much damage on this Yasuo. Not being dealt with this Porsche now trying to bait. Can they find Niles? He doesn't have all. He has the flash coming up cooldown very shortly, but not short enough. That's another kill to UST. Captain America falls and UST now trying to take the objectives as Baron down. And I gotta say, gutsy call from UST to just blast that Baron. Yeah. But they were able to find the turn of the back half. I gotta say, I gotta take a second look. I was kind of looking at Daption and how he got caught. Looking at this replay, Shogo went so low as he got attacked, but Robbie Bob able to find a good ult again in the backside. And Scary Jerry, really far up, gets casted one shot by Porsche and Daption. Porsche again stepping up big. And you say Daption caught out. He was purposefully there. He's stopping yeah, Odd Orange yeah. to get in that pit. Leona chain CC. They even threw out the Gragas as well. Odd Orange had no chance at a steal. Beautifully set up and played by UST. I mean, that is the job of the owner, right? Just press W, you're yep. invincible. So <laughs> Daption doing a good job of playing bodyguard there. Yeah. The superstar carry in the bot lane might have fallen, but Shogo, you know, he said in an interview earlier uh, in the tournament, like, hey, if you, I pretty much 1v9 the last final, you know, that's <laughs> why we're here. Uh, my friend, you are not 1v9ing this one, but you are the big distraction to make sure the team gets up around you. It's here we go again. Here's the setup from USD, oh. though. Oh, already, Zyko's out of it. Marital just don't have a lot of life left in them. They're on a Shogo once again, but this time they won't even take down the Draven. A double kill to Dardog. Robbie Bob, he's not done. Oh, nice mechanics splashing in with a knockout oh. out of Jerry. Gets summoner spells out of the Lucian, does not guarantee the kill. But this game is just getting rapidly accelerated. This is a Baron empowered push onto the inhibitor. The value of Yasuo with the knockups, the wind wall against MU's comp was so good. Dardock made sure that everything was set up for his team as Dardock at 6 1 and 8 has been a part in dictating MU everything. UST looking at. MU can't hit the wave yet. There's no ult on UST, but they might still just hard force this regardless. Jerry, Jerry does poke them back. Has a lot of damage. Yeah, UST without their ultimates to engage, they cannot force the end. I mean, look at the value of Windwall there, right? It ate the tidal wave. You can yep. eat nearly all of Ari's damage with a good Windwall. Robbie Bob. Uh, playing this really well. I don't think it shows as much in the score line, but where he's throwing these W's is really opening up so much space for his back line and just making it so that this threat overload comp, they have more threats since he's eliminating half of them from the side of MU. UST take the inhibitor. They'll take all the bottom jungle camps and most likely get out of this one. Porsche has the explosive cast, might need to use it defensively, get back over the wall. Uh -oh. Looks like one will be sacrificed. Porsche a little bit behind on the resets. Phase rush. Wait a minute. Right. Ah, he's running! The big man might just get out of there. That's Flash out of Ooh. get back. The Zonia is used by Porsche. Okay. He's buying so much time for the team. 
All right. Uh, you know, Porsche, wait night cruise. Uh, you know, might have had a little bit of an oopsie there. Uh, but, I mean, besides that, he has been, in my opinion, it's been him and Dardock that have really stepped up in this game. These ultimates have been so big from them. Just really timing everything that Ooh. Maryville wants to do is Dardock not trying to bluff out the charm, but able to stick the recall there on the side of MU. And we get a deep breath before UST tries to take down more objectives. They have set their sights on the last Zyker. inner turret stand. Zyker's got to be careful, thinking that the engage will happen from jungle. But look at this brush down here. Dardok was waiting. Scary Jar, if you walk up, you're just going to get chain CC'd. Is able to avoid the Wukong Cyclone. That's big. That should go. will not be available for go. Dragon. Teleport from get back. They have a flank. Maryville are looking for it. Good patience. All five members grouped up. Porsche is just spawning. He can teleport in now. Daption's absorbing the focus so far. Oh. Shogo go jump on get oh. back. Got him. Daption's down. Everyone from MU is jumping onto the back line, and UFC are shredded. Three ball for nothing. The flank from Maryville was beautiful. Great TP and execution from Get Back as they're going to get the kitchen sink and take the dragon as well. Porsche's TP, it was not with the minion wave. It was instead behind MU, way far away yep. as the 4v5 with no alternate for the Wukong and the beautiful execute on the Shogo who didn't have flash. MU give themselves some life in this game one. I don't think that they realize Get Back teleported to the dragon pit. Yeah. I don't think anybody was marking that because that Ari charm definitely surprised Shogo. <laughs> yeah. You see the celebration from Odd Orange. And yet again, the teleport from Porsche went so far in because UST thought they were in the driver's seat. They thought they were the ones engaging, just like the play bot lane. But time and time again now, Maryville are showing they have such a good understanding of when they can go in, when it's their time to fight. I still favor this game state for UST, but I gotta say that kill went over to get back. He almost has the hat ready. And also IE now for Scary Jerry when he decides to dash in with that Nami E and the mandate, that's gonna be a lot of chip damage that St. Thomas is gonna have a little bit of trouble dealing with. So I think it's really key for St. Thomas to still pick fights on their terms. Use the Wukong Gragas and the weed they have to get vision control, force MU to check you, and make sure that you're able to start the fight, win the fight before MU has a chance to even get in it. That's how much upfront damage this comp can have. At this point, if I'm Shogo, I don't know what the correct Draven build is normally, but I'm going stopwatch. They, yeah. You know that you have yeah. target on your back. This is what, four fights in a row that you have been singled out every time. Yep, there it is. By Maryville, and there we go. Okay, Shogo realizes this. Is that gonna be enough for the next fight? I mean, that's one way to stop Vial, right? Whenever yeah. Vi presses are on you, just able to use that stopwatch, see if Shogo has the reaction time, the mechanics that we have praised him for to step up in the finals as UST. I mean, honestly, they have the gold lead, but this game, it feels like it's pretty 50-50 with where things are at on the map, or a 55-45 is MU. That fight was really big for them. I just want to see if Get Back can get in one more reset to try and get this death cap before they even think about fighting over this Baron. USC don't want that to happen. They have the supers pushing mid, so they can shove the wave and start up Baron right now. Yeah. Will they do it? Yeah. Yep. Shogo just starts hitting it. Oh, wait, no, that was a ward. Okay, never mind. It's a bluff. I'm gonna try and protect that control ward is okay. That's try and get Ragnarok out with the double bubble. That's pretty big right now. Dardox still on the Niles, who has ran away. Oh no, they oh. come in right now. If they can pick up Niles, that's the front line down for Maryville. They got him. And Ooh. Porsche just one shot. Scary Jerry on the back line. Even Porsche. on a psycho for the double kill. Porsche taking this game into his own hands. It was his mistake that got caught, but Porsche making up for it on the back cap as he's able to find the kills. And Porsche now, I think he just ended the game. That cast, that was all the hopes that Maryville had for game one dash. This one's going over to UST. Get back does not get the Rabbitons off of the reset. Said Odd Orange cannot get onto the wave. It's a desperation engage now. But even Odd Orange goes down. UST are showing up the defending CeeLo champions taking game one. And Porsche, I think a big part of the semifinal last year against Maryville was that Porsche stepped up in that series and Porsche in that game one, he did his job on the weak side, Gragas, and he was a menace in some of those team fights. Absolute disgusting engages, one-shotting Scary Jerry at the end there. When everybody's looking at Niles, he said, no, I trust you. You guys are going to take down the Olaf. I'm going to look this way because everyone's funneling in to try and save their top laner. 
And the willingness to uh, pivot targets in a team fight like that is huge at the collegiate level. I mean, I also just want to credit Dardock as well. Like the fact that he waited for the instant for that Ragnarok to expire, yep. goes in. You know what happens in that choke too? Robbie Bomb just gets used wind wall, prevent all the damage coming in from the projectile based team. I really like the draft from US2. I feel like that Yasuo answer, very clever, creative, and used at the right time for Rami Bob and UST. I think that was a big part of them finding that game one. Yeah, and it, I don't know if this is how we necessarily expect it to go. I know UST are the defending champions. They are not a slouch by any means, but rumblings from the community, it still felt like Maryville were coming in as favorites. Even when we talked to the desk, it was a surprise to see UST on there, right? Uh I, I, no? had, I had USD 3-2. Uh, oh, okay. I, I, now you yeah. say it. No, I, I mean, yeah, of hey, course. Well, did you tweet it out beforehand? No, just like you forgot to tweet it out beforehand. Hey, <laughs> you hey, I did try. It just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't throw me under the bus for something you're guilty for. <laughs> All right, well, Maryville need to find a recipe for success after dropping game one, so let's head on over to the dining hall to see what strategies our analysts are cooking up. All right, well, it's time to eat because it looks like both teams are feeding back and forth and joining us <laughs> to join in the dining is Mobility and Frost Force. Guys, thank you for, so much for joining us here on the desk after that crazy, crazy game. And uh, just want to get your quick thoughts on game number one here of uh, the grand finals here, Frost Force. Um, I'd say that, you know, UST stuck with their game plan. They made sure that Shogo got fed, Shogo got fed. So <laughs> what can you say? Like, they, they played well. Um, Dardock, you know, controlled the game pretty well, so I'd say they had a pretty good game plan coming in. How about you, Mobility? What'd you think? Jungle diff, as it always is. <laughs> not That's a, a typical bot botlin response not, not right there, diff. you know? It's a jungle diff. It wasn't enough help on both sides. I think Dardock understood his role really well in this game. He knew yeah. how to just be around the bot lane and make sure the Draven gets fed. Yeah, well, again, uh, that first map victory going on over to UST. And, you know, when you go back to the draft, Yasuo comes on out as the last pick to support uh, the Gragas, uh, the Wukong, and the Draven, the main character pick, as they called it on the broadcast there for Shogo. What'd you make of that, Hawk? I mean, it's just, again, exactly what UST wanted to do, right? We said Dardock has got to get down to the bottom lane and get Shogo going. They were able to do it, and I loved that Draven pick for Shogo in the Lushinami. He was able to perform on it. And look, he put the target right on his back from game one. Maryville, they tried to attack it, but it didn't really work. Yeah, Cubby called it out as well on the opposite side. If you're odd orange, he, he said, look up at the top lane at the Gragas. You know that Wukong's going to be on the bottom side of the map. You got to dive. You got to get something going. Wasn't necessarily what happened there, uh, Frost Force. Yeah, I'd say that... Um... Uh, Wukong's mapping in the early game was really good. Like, he made sure to keep track of where Vi was, made sure that she wasn't, you know, doing things that she shouldn't be allowed to do, you know, like ganking our bot lane, you know, not allowed. <laughs> yeah. Stuff like that. All right, well, let's take a look at the first, or some of the major action that happened on the bottom side of the map. This is where Draven gets that cash in. Yeah, so um, they see that the bot lane, they're setting up for a dive on the bot lane. They use their ulti early. They know that Scary Jerry doesn't have any cleanse, so they force out his dash, and you know, it was just easy pickings from there. They just go in and just Kill them both. Make sure that Draven gets, uh, you know, juggle the aggro correctly and make sure Draven gets the shut down. At least we're on one of them. One point that you make there, no cleanse. It was Ignite, I think, that was brought there. What do you make of that mobility? Um, I think one thing with Scary Jerry is he doesn't... They knew, I, I know UST's plan is they know he doesn't really think about the matchup that much. He kind of just defaults into, if you ever look at his Lucian Nami games, more times than not, he's just Ignite every game. Mm -hmm. So... To me, I don't understand like why you wouldn't bring cleanse, but to him, I think it's just like a default thing. Like he doesn't really think about it. We know that there's been a lot of uh, buildup of smack talk and bad blood between both teams, but specifically on the bottom side of the map, you start to wonder if maybe that is starting to play a factor more than usual in this game. Uh, let's fast forward here to one of the big fights of the game. It was the Baron fight where we're thinking, okay, we're getting on the AD care. We're getting on Shogo. He's dead. Yes, they get Baron. Let's clean up. Not exactly the case here. Yeah, I think in this in this fight, uh, you can see from their way they're playing that Shogo knows he doesn't have flash, and I think the comms in this is just he's just going to accept his death if they do come fight him. Uh, I think Daption did a really good job at just I'm assuming the call is just finished Baron, and they're just he's just CCing using everything on Vi to make sure she can't get into the fight, and then on the meantime on the side. Gragas is just throwing his barrel at Scary Jerry and making it pretty unplayable for him to play. They're just comboing with the Gragas and Yaswalt, so. They just stuck to Baron and accept the deaths where it was. I think an important thing to point out here, though, is, again, Shogo put the target on his back after getting those early kills, so Maryville throws everything at him in every fight, but even if Shogo died, 
there was still the support staff to clean it up. I mean, as Frost pointed out, Dardock having an incredible game on the Wukong. So that's the big threat of UST, right? Is if Shogo gets going, it feels like there's almost no winning because either you killed him and great, now you get mopped up by everybody else or he just kills you himself. Yeah, and, and the difficult part about all that is that was proven in the fight before at the Drake where it's like, okay, this is probably the most equal fight you're going to get at Drake. You jump on the AD carry, your AD carry gets jumped on and all of a sudden, it's just Niles walking away on Olaf right. being like, what happened, guys? I got into the back line, we got it. What happened behind me? Scary Jerry really didn't have the opportunity to play for most of this game, partially because of the clans, but partially because of the matchup, partially because that was the game plan that UST had. But something needs to change to get this AD carry going for the side of Maryville Hill Frost Forest. What would you say? Um, I'd say have a less more less volatile matchup. I'd say in their matchup against us, they played played like Zyvercon, made it so that their lane is wasn't really interactive as yeah. much. They need to make sure that the game is sort of stable in the bot side. Make sure that Shogo can't get such a huge lead to take over the game. And I'd say that if they can do that, then that will make the game a lot more easier, like more even for everyone else. Well, we had one more replay there with Maryville making a triumphant fight back here. We, we already had taken positions on the couch being like, yeah, this game's over. UST is going to close it out. Big TP by get back to get behind and start cleaning these things up here, guys. Yeah, uh, the TP was really good. I think they know Shogo doesn't have flash in this fight, so uh, Ari comes out of no vision, hits another charm. They all just dogpile on him, and since the fight is so, everybody's so compacted, and they don't have to chase Shogo so far, they can instantly kill him, and then they're able to just wipe up everybody else before Gragas can even enter the fight as well. So, yeah, it's really well. I think it's important that they dove in from the side, like they have one person flanking from the side instead of diving straight head on, like they did in the earlier fight with the Vi. They made it so that they got onto Shogo a lot easier, and they didn't have to use as many resources, so they could, you know, kite the fight a little more and just. Play better uh we had a report card earlier for the teams in their victories uh in the semifinals. if you're great in this one on we'll just keep it teamwork and entertainment what do you give the grade here for ust in their first round win um i'd say their entertainment is a s <laughs> yeah, our, our, our a, Draven a i mean come on Draven you can't get better than that also greg is like you know it's literally just fun combo you know you just all you have to do is hit your abilities and Hit, your, hit their carries with your autos if you get fed. How do you feel about this comp here, Mobility? Uh, and what do you give it? I give it an S for entertainment as well. <laughs> the, the comp is really, really hard for Lucian to play. It never feels like you can play the game, especially without cleanse. It's You get hit by one ability, you're probably going to die inside the fight. It seems pretty unplayable. Um, the, the comp is an S. I know they, I know they had, a, had that comp cooked up. They had it ready. And what was the other grade? Uh, I was gonna say, uh, was it teamwork and entertainment? So you gave me the entertainment. The teamwork, I guess, teamwork. is yeah. I think the comp kind of just plays for itself almost in these in these fights. It's all just throw one ability out and Lucian instantly dies. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's turn our attention to the next match as Maryville has selected the blue side. Obviously, we've touted their multi-man roster. They will not go with any subs. So same guys rolling in, trying to get revenge here. It will not be a 3-0 for Maryville. No one no one called out a 3-0. I think all of us that picked on here were 3-1 or 3-2. So I, I just want to take a second and get your predictions. Yes, we know what game one's result is, but uh, how did you see this series playing out here for us for us? Um, Did well, you have a 3-0 in Maryville? Yeah, I, I actually predicted 3-0 Maryville for me personally. So I had a 3-1 USC. So I guess it'll be a 3-1 Maryville, I guess, for me now, I guess. All I right. still believe in that they can bounce back. I would say that their game plan was uh, definitely shaken. Like they, I think now that they tried out the Lucian on me, they know that they can have the Draven answer. They might switch it back up, up a bit and make sure that they don't give them that line again. Uh, I think they're... I don't think they should first pick the Vi either. I think that is... Not a good pick to first pick. I would rather see something different like the Wukong. Yeah. Maybe some other AD carry pick that is more stable. I, I like the Xy or Khan. Um, you know, you can always go back to Jinx Ophelia, so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, give me a bot lane that you want to see here, mobility for uh, Scary Jerry and Maryville. Just kind of going off what uh, Frostforce said, I think more stable bot lane. I don't think they're the best at playing the Lucianami in the really high mechanical like stress on the lanes i think they're really good and they show that against the series and us they're really good at just playing zyra khan and kind of standing at their tower or just standing like just standing around and waiting for things to come to them naturally um in a more stable bot lane i think that's the best for them 
All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining myself and Hawk here on the couch. We're headed for a short break. On the other side, frat president Kangas and class counselor Cubby have game number two. You don't want to go anywhere. See you in a bit. Because what if we lose? <laughs> yeah, we can't say that. <laughs> That's true. But I guarantee you, if we win the first game of the series, we will throw it. They, they will crumble. They, yes, are, they are a crumbling team. It's hot orange, though. He's looking. Here Ooh. we go. Engage on the show. Go. Flash and healer available. Flash early. Everyone's diving onto the back line, and they got him. Shogo down by the combo from Robbie Bob. Porsche is coming. Takes down one in answer. Porsche joins in. That's oh. an AP. Groggins goes boom. That's one for two so far. Make it a one for three. Oh, what's he got two turns. flanks. Yeah. Niles and Getback are coming from awkward angles here. Daption might just be the sacrificial lamb. Getback's in the pit. Burned it. Looking for Shogo. They're going to go for him. They got him. Dardock has secured the Baron. Lost his AD carry. Oh. Otherwise he goes down. Getback goes down. Meanwhile, Zyko's getting hunted by the rest of UST. Niles might be the only one to get out of here.